言っている I'd like to call tonight's board meeting to order. Uh, please join me for opening exercises. Uh, the pledge followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and its republic for which it stands, John Cassiano. <clears throat> Willard Delacker. Here. Joseph Fatsoner. Here. Todd Hernandez. Here. Becky Height. Here. Lauren Hunsinger. Here. Todd Leiser. Here. Rachel Schaffler. <clears throat> Jennifer Senevitis. Here. Thank you. Okay, moving on. 1.04, approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Any comments, questions, changes? Nothing. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. All right, thank you. All right, welcome everybody. Full house tonight. Good to see people here today. I think I know what everybody's here for. So we'll move on. Uh, next item is courtesy of the floor. So at this moment, if there's anybody that would like to address the board, uh, we just ask that you uh, state your name in the township that you live in um, and say your speech for your piece. And if not, there'll be an opportunity if you stay for the rest of the meeting to address the board at the end as well. So anybody here for, to adjust the board besides presentation? All right, seeing none, we'll move forward. Uh, next item is the minutes. And we have uh, the uh, last month's uh, board minutes and the workshop minutes from two weeks previously. Mm -hmm. Two minutes. minutes. Second. Mm -hmm. Mr. Passo, we got it. Any comments, mm -hmm. questions? Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All right. All right. Everybody's here for recognition presentation. Thank you. I think you are all here. We are excited to welcome our high school art students and all of their families. Um, so I will turn this over to Mrs. Yadish to introduce Mrs. Seiler and all of the high school art students who are here to, I think, introduce all of the high school art that blesses our boardroom tonight. And um, I will turn it over to Mrs. Yadish. Thank you, Mrs. Bowman. I am very honored and proud to introduce and welcome uh, Brooke Seiler, who is our high school art teacher and uh, a wonderful representation of all of her students. 
um, from all of her classes here tonight with us. They are the owners and creators of all the artwork that you see around the room today. I did share with Mrs. Seiler when I got here that we had admin yesterday and we're very paranoid <laughs> about <laughs> the uh, ceramic along the wall because we certainly didn't want to ruin anything that these uh, students have created for us. So welcome and the floor is yours. Thank you. I'm gonna, I'll go up front. Um, I just have a few words to say about what we studied. Um, my name is Brooke Seiler. This is my first year here, so I'm really excited and happy to share some of the artwork of the students. Um, for this year's rotation and our future rotations, I wanted the students to study an artist rather than sharing the artwork that I'm hoping to share at the May annual art show. So we decided to study Vincent Van Gogh. Um, Vincent Van Gogh was a leader of the post-impressionism art movement. He was a Dutch painter creating art in the late 1800s. Most of my students seem to know him by the fact that he cut off his ear. <laughs> and although we spoke about this a little bit, um, he did not cut off the entire ear. He only cut off the lobe, <laughs> if that makes him any less crazy. Um, but anyway, we did learn more about him than that. Um, Van Gogh painted almost 900 paintings in 10 years. Arguably his most famous painting, The Starry Night, which a lot of students were inspired by, um, was actually painted while he was in an asylum. He suffered from manic depression. His style, as you can see, was mainly with vibrant colors and thick dramatic brush strokes. The work was not meant to be realistic, but more an impression of realism. Um, and you may hear his technique called impasto, which is an Italian word describing a technique where the pigment is thickly laid onto the surface. Um, like most artists, Van Gogh was not really appreciated until after his time, but we as a class, we appreciated his painterly technique. Um, over my last five years teaching, I've noticed that a lot of people consider good art to be realistic art, um, when there are so many other movements and really successful work that we could be studying. So um, Van Gogh is a great example of that. And I am excited to kind of study outside of that realism techniques. So if you look around the room, you will find three successful artwork that is not super realistic um, in many ways and just has a really beautiful painterly technique. So my students that are um, displayed here tonight from drawing and painting are Ali Tentorelli, who's actually here, um, Alexa George, Michelle Pichardo, Rory Velasquez, who is also here, Peyton Neumoyer, who is here, um, students from 3D Art, Kaya DiBello, Tessa DeJesus, Emma Yanders, who is here, Olivia Grenewald, um, sorry, these are students from Ceramics now, Olivia Grenewald, Ansley Baylor, who is here, Lauren Feinauer, Eva Mark, Olivia Fagan, Stacey Berardi, Elizabeth Sanchez, Jordan Allen, Eden Brasky, who is here, Lindsay Holonitz. And then we have two students from my new BYOA Flex Club, which is like a non-official club where students can come to me during Flex and create art of their choice, but they bring their own art materials. Um, and both of those students are here, Amanda, Lind Amanda Lindemuth and Evan Muscle. All right. That's all I got for you. Any questions? That they certainly can come up. I also have certificates, which I know is not totally cool for my family. <laughs> <laughs> so I told Mrs. Tyler, I recognize it might not be cool for high school kids with the certificates, but I do have them for you. So I would like to give them to you. Um, I was trying to track who was here and who was not here, and I did not do a good job. So I have some of them for who, are, who is here. But Mrs. Tyler, I'm sure, will help me who yeah. is here who is not here. If you would like to come up by your artwork and take a photograph, um, you are more than welcome to do that. But before that, do the board members have any questions for either Mrs. Seiler or any of the students while I um, start to distribute certificates. So do any of the board members have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no one copied me on that. Yeah. So, so are the ceramics uh, also uh, Van Gogh style? Yes. Yeah, so many of them um, Actually, none of them did any like building that was Van Gogh, but they all like painted their pieces Van Gogh style. Um, there's a couple coasters over there. There's two teapots, um, some bowls. We have a string art over there. Um, some of these works are also from 3D. There's two up here with paper quilling and painting. Um, so they're all just kind of Van Gogh theme where they kind of looked at some of his work and then copied from 
from his style. I'd yeah. like to see the students come and point to their artwork. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Or I could point for them. <laughs> they're, they're nervous about that. I can tell you the ones who are here. Um, Emma is here. This is her painting with paper quilling. You guys raise your hand. Is Emma. <laughs> I'll bring you a certificate, but you are welcome to quantum if you'd like to come up and find your artwork or point to your artwork. This one is Amanda. She's one of the flex students. Um, this is Allie's. This is an oil pastel. This is Peyton's. This is acrylic paint. Rory's here. This is oil pastels. And Evan's here. This is chalk pastels. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, did you say after Peyton? Uh, we have Rory and Evan. Rory. Rory. And then Eden is painting in glass over there. And then right next to it is a little teapot, which is a ceramic teapot, and it's got this beautiful like sunflower lid. It's so cute that thing, please. Eden. And I think I got everybody. Oh, hi, Jordan. I didn't see you. Sorry, Jordan. Um, I didn't see you until now. Jordan's in ceramic. She did the butterfly over on the window. So. Well, I'd like to say thank you. Uh, we do appreciate the homework. Uh, thank you for lo loaning it to us because yes. I guess if you're unaware, we'll probably hang on to this for the balance of the summer, for the balance of the year, yes. and in the summer and then the fall, we'll make it back available to you. Uh, so without it, this uh, off this room would be very uh, empty. So we do thank you for sharing your artwork, and it is a nice uh, uh, accent to to this room. So thank you. And uh, parents, if you wanted to get a close up before you leave, feel free to come uh, take a picture of your child's artwork if you if you wanted to. Really amazing work, guys. Yeah, it's very nice. And if you haven't gone to the Van Gogh exhibit, I don't know if anybody's seen that. The experience, the Van Gogh experience, it was in Philly. Um, I went to it in DC. I would highly recommend it. It's an immersive experience. It's awesome. It's really awesome. And in the end, there's a 3D virtual reality. Um, you can put the virtual reality headsets on and walk through his gardens and walk through some of the places where he painted some of his, uh, his work. So it's pretty, pretty incredible. Sorry. And the starry night that everybody knows about is a surprisingly small painting. Yeah. Like, if you've never seen it, you see it in, on, in books and a poster. You assume it's a big thing. It's a small little painting. It, it was unlike Monet. If anybody's ever seen Monet's works, they take up the whole wall. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank 
I know you all have Hallmark. You are more than welcome to stay for us. Also, more than welcome to the show. Do Hallmark if you have Hallmark. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
like they have a gen the same genuine goal. They just might have a different path about how they might want to get there. Um, you know, Peach Wire is around the corner from us. I mean, I've met with him a few times. He, although he's not our rep, he knows me and we walked in, he greeted me. Um, he doesn't necessarily represent us per se, but um, we've seen, I've seen him a number of times. Um, and so I think that's always good, whether he represents us or not, to have somebody that you probably walked up to him after and asked him some questions about the funding formula and representation of residential versus, versus commercial um, in the funding formula, which is always our question about how, how that is or isn't represented in the funding formula. Um, and so just the fact that he'll kind of entertain those questions, even though he's not our person. Um, was there any discussion about Senator Orgel's uh, committee that's looking at the charter school funding? There was a little bit of discussion about the charter school funding. Um, at the time, the proposal on the table was $8,000 cap um, on cyber charter schools and the tiered funding formula for special education as of last week. Um, all of the groups came out with a message and a, um, their new proposal is a $10,000 cap on cyber charter schools and a tiered funding for special education. Um, They're not really making any progress either. I don't know that it is or isn't making progress. I think the proposal has changed slightly from even when Todd and I were there hearing them because it was an $8,000 cap. And again, that was only cyber. Um, still still a place to start but it was on um, cyber at eight thousand just as of um i don't know last thursday i think yeah. um we got message that the newest proposal is ten thousand for cyber and still hearing the cyber hearing the special education funding where the two proposals the, the, the combined proposal on the table now is slightly changed which is even different than when todd and i were there so he they did address the cyber a little bit um, and again, you know, the, the Jesse Topper, the one representative said, as different parts of the state, that varies with whether or not that is important to them, meaning there are parts of the state that don't have cyber schools, and his part of the state was one of them that didn't have any, and there are parts of the state like ours that has a lot. And so dependent upon your representative and where there are hubs of cyber and charter schools depends upon whether or not it's a rep that wants reform or doesn't and he was pretty adamant about that yeah I forgot about that piece. we are kind of like the hub i was thinking it was statewide but apparently it's really not it's always <clears throat> told by our rep that he is an advocate for charters and uh, that tells a lot so in the in the we have um met with representatives as a board not the entire board but they've come in and we've been given opportunity to speak about a variety of topics is that something we could do again i mean, I mean they're open to doing that we can invite them i don't know without asking if they're open to doing that again i don't know if the the rest of the board just i feel like it may come on deaf ears but um i think it's better than sending a <clears throat> passive aggressively condescending email because that gets nowhere i've tried that um you know in favor of or for or whatever the position is um i think they still need to hear i think we still need to advocate but if you don't think that that's important as a board, it's just my opinion. Yeah, if it's something the board wants me to make a request, then ask, we can. I think it's important, but it's got to be received by the right people, the, the representative, too. Right. Would it be a workshop invitation so we could actually sit and look at a budget and say, here's what we're facing? I mean, do they ever sit and look at an actual, here's a use case and say, Here's how much money's leaving. Here's how much money's coming in. Here's our imbalance. And we'd love to get your thoughts on how we fix that. I don't think we need the state reps to tell us how the budget I know, I want them to. <laughs> I don't think they know how, but my point is, do they ever look at the actual reality on the ground? You would hope so. Oh, there, how would they? So many unless they're going into unless our so many presentations up and, that yeah. Yeah. our people have done with our reps. And, 
And when, when um, Bill was president, we did a meeting at one of the PSBA um, advocacy days, and you know they asked about you know how will this ever change? And I think Bill gave the example of the 2.2 million dollars we have in the budget would essentially close our budget gap if it was back in our budget. Mm -hmm. um, and so you use you know the example of a budget on the ground. If if that was not if that was back in our budget, we wouldn't have that necessarily. You, know, you talk about the, the the difference between revenues and expenditures. If that money was in our budget, we wouldn't be having this annual conversation about the difference between revenues and expenditures to the degree that we are. Um, and I think I said to you, I asked the representative at the time, you know, where do you start? Where can we gain consensus across the aisle about some place to start? <laughs> I mean, those on that call, um, and they said, you know, cyber seems to be the place to start where there's across the aisle support for some sort of consensus. So I think that's why they started where they did with some sort of bill for cyber. Um, I don't know whether it's going, I don't know movement wise. I don't know why it changed from eight to 10. I don't know the backing on, I don't know the background on that. I can tell you that we have plans to go to the Capitol on April 30th, and we have plans to go to the Capitol on May 6th. Um, I think they need to hear from more than just us, um, but I'll be glad to make reach outs to, to if it needs, if it is more than just a small committee of the board, it does need to be in public, so a workshop would certainly be the place to do that. I don't, if it's the will of the board, I'll certainly do reach outs and do invites to whatever you would like me to do. You just let me know. I'm not opposed to anything about that. that's right, sure. I think when you personalize it to Todd's point, it's a different story than talking about it loosely. Um, <clears throat> so I would be in favor of that. We create a packet mold. What's the, what's the next uh, milestone in our timeline for the budget? May is your proposed final budget that will have to be adopted. May and by 8. May, do we expect to know what the state's going to uh, see? And that, and that would be a a good point to, to bring you guys in. Yeah, yeah and the latest update is that do. the governor's budget is not going to be passed by June 30th. No. Is it ever? Again. Right. Yeah, it never is. Right. Yeah. But we have to. So you're doing right. it in the dark. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> they, they are standing tall on the base, the increase to everyone's base, base, base. Basically. amount for basic education will go through that it will no longer be the eight years ago base of basic education for each school it will be the 23 24 amount which is an increase of like five hundred thousand dollars for us oh, we know what that is yes mm -hmm. they're they're standing tall that that that's a gift that is going to happen it's still a until it passes, it's still a variable. I yes. think even that's a good point, though. I don't think a lot of people necessarily realize because so many, so many people question, like, well, why are we always like, you know, having a deficit or something? But we're we're basically making a budget blindly, so you can't meet a target if you don't have a target. You know, most corporations and hospitals and other nonprofit organizations, like, they have a physical budget, like they know how much money they have. But we're really working in a in a situation where you really don't know. And if the budget is passed late, I mean, in my opinion, it shouldn't be. But if it is, then you're really we're approving something, and we have no idea on the back end what's happening six months down the road. So I think that that's even something that would be great to talk about live, so that people can hear it and the representatives can understand. I mean, they're aware of it, but maybe they can work a little harder to come to some sort of agreement to pass a budget. All right, thank you. Okay, we'll move into personnel. So we have first item is the, the agenda, personnel agenda. Thank you, Mr. Candace. Um, we have 15 items tonight uh, to present and for your approval. Uh, we did uh, recognize all of our retirees and this um, personnel action has our first hire for the 24-25 school year. And that is uh, Mr. Haddad, who will be our school counselor at the middle school effective August 12th of uh, this year and he will be here on our at our next meeting on uh, may 8th so mr Dico can introduce him to all of you and the other items are our usual business items items highlighted in yellow have been added since uh, friday 
and I ask for your approval tonight. All right, thank you. Is that surge in uh, sabbaticals a seasonal thing? Mm. Looks like a surge to me. No, we usually have three to four. This is five this year. One of them is conditional waiting for some more paperwork. Okay, so um, it's not unusual. Yeah, we usually take them this time of year. They're due uh, to the district by uh, April 1st. And remind us, sabbaticals are at what level of pay or they no pay? Receive, it depends. Uh, it's a full year sabbatical. They will receive 50% of their salary and 100% of their health benefits. They do need to make the employee contribution. And then they also receive uh, tuition reimbursement for the full year. It's up to 18 credits. Number of these are half year. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. So what's a half year then? It would be 75% of their salary uh, and also full benefits plus the employee contribution and nine credits reimbursed through tuition reimbursement. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll let it say the motion. Second. I thought you were going to listen. All right. All right. Any additional comments and questions? All those in favor, aye. 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 Those no? Thank you. It was an just under two of the other. It needs to change seats. I'll take the next one okay. so, so they can argue over who's going to do it. This is a final draft of a student teaching agreement with Lehigh University for a new program. A Lehigh University received grant money uh, and they are turning it into a program called PACE. Lehigh PACE stands for Pennsylvania Accelerated Certification for Educators where an educator can receive a pre-K to 12 special education master's degree and certification within 15 months. So we have one person who's interested in this program. Uh, we've been going back and forth with the agreement and that's why I'm asking you for approval pending our final solicitor review, which I hope to have this week. That's for you approval. Okay, so we do need to take action on this one. So moved. All right. Second. Does anybody have any questions or no comments on this one? So 15 months certification for what level? Like what's the pre-K to 12 special special ed. This is the new certification within the last two years. All right, anyone else? All right, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no? All right, much guys, thank you. Okay, let's see. The next item, uh, 2.03, is the 24-25 support staff rate sheet, and that is attached to the agenda. Mm -hmm. So the items for our support staff for the 24-25 school year, the rates of pay, and also the next item is the health care contributions for our support staff for the 24-25 school year. I don't know if you want to take both items together. We did. We did. Uh, that just had one shot. Yes. I didn't see the last right there. That's why I was well, there are half sure. there are exactly right. Oh, right. that's right. That's right. My apologies. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that being said, we did review these uh, and vet them at the uh, exact session at, at the workshop two weeks ago. So we can take them together if uh, the board will entertain. So motion to approve 203 and 204. Second. Uh, comments or questions on these? All right, all those in favor, aye. 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 Those no? All right, guys, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, we do not have anything for curriculum and building uh, today, which puts us into policy. So we do have three items there first reading, second reading, and uh, there, I don't believe it was anything to us. And we did review these at uh, uh, workshop two weeks ago. So is there any? There are no additional comments. If you have any additional questions, I'll submit them. Can we take them together? Okay. Can we second? Only second reading is Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. <clears throat> All right, that being said, uh, I'll entertain a motion for a second reading and final approval. So moved. Second. second. Uh, any comments on these? All right, all those in favor, aye. 
All right, we're gonna close now. All right, much guys, thank you. Uh, operations, we do not have anything for tonight. So we'll move into district finances and the first item is the 2425 budget update. I will go ahead and start this since it starts with staffing and Christy will finish it up. Um, so this starts with um, staffing for elementary, middle school and high school. This is our typical time we bring you staffing presentations, which um, look very similar to the way that they have in the past. So the first slide that you have, and Stacey will click through for mm -hmm. me, looks very similar to what it has in the past. This is your elementary um, nor Northwestern on the left, Weisenberg on the right. Just to remind you, grade levels on the left and what is in parentheses is what you have in policy for your class size guidelines. Guidelines being guidelines, not being what we have used as um, law. Um, we have gone above and below, mostly um, above in certain cases. That doesn't mean when I hit 22 in kindergarten, I always add a class size or a, a class section. The next column in both sides is the number of sections we typically have run. Um, the next column is the number of students we have in the sections and obviously straight division. So they don't always run straight because you know you have additional students get added, but it's, it's pretty much straight division. And then our recommendation and the change of the staff. Obviously kindergarten, you'll see asterisks because that's the number of students we have to date. Um, I mentioned to you last month that Weisenberg was obviously trending a little higher. And so we're recommending adding an additional section in kindergarten because they are at 72 in March, end of March, beginning of April. And so obviously between March, the end of March, beginning of April and August, we anticipate getting additional students. And so when they were trending at 22 and 23 students at three sections, we recommended adding an additional section. Um, originally that was not budgeted. We did add that to the budget because they were already running at 72 students. Um, we are recommending in addition to what you see on the slide, reducing one special education teacher because at Northwestern Elementary is running really low on special education students, which are with a large group of students going to the middle school. And you will see one item highlighted in red. Um, I typically have highlighted in red if they are over the class size guidelines. So you will see um, Weisenberg Elementary in what will be third grade running one student in each section running over class size guidelines at 25. We'll also see a recommendation um, in, and it is shown in first grade, and this will be a little complicated to explain as adding two sections, but it's not really in first grade. And what I mean by that is that 52 that is in second grade is the class that I decided to run last year as two sections. It was 50 last year. So if you remember right, last year, that section that says 52 in second grade was 50. And our choices last year were to run it as two classes of 25 or three classes of like 17. So this year we made the choice to run what is this year's first grade at two classes of 25 little higher than we would like. Um, next year, those students will be second graders. I'm recommending because now they have 52 to drop that to three sections. So that extra teacher is really in that other grade, but it's appearing low, it's appearing in the grade below. So I don't know if that makes any sense. You're actually seeing it in first grade, but the ad's actually in second grade, if that makes sense. Um, so I am recommending adding two elementary teachers to Weisenberg Elementary School. It's actually first and second grade, but they're both teachers in first grade to reduce class sizes. Because you have two high, very larger classes in what will be next year's kindergarten and what will be next year's first grade at Weisenberg, both in the 70s in comparison to what we have typically run in the 50s and 60s. What happens in 2526? In which class? With that class. Well, we left the same thing Are we ran. Continue to add as they go through? Well, I mean, it depends on the class sizes, yeah. but we that's what we did with that 78. So we ran four in the 70 in kindergarten and we moved four forward. So it depends on how many kids you keep or lose. You make that decision every single year. Just like that 52 
when it gets to a higher grade might be fine with lower numbers, but. What happens too with like the second grade at Northwestern Elementary, if you get a couple students added in there, cause that's at 70, like that's drastically different. And they're at 23, 24. So they're almost in the boat of Weisenberg when you added a section there. Yep, this is. Yep. Why even numbers across the board are a little easier. <laughs> Because and so that when you look at 17s and 18s and 23s and 24s, although they don't look much different across the board, you add one or two, and Northwestern Elementary's second grade could be just as easily in the same boat as Weisenberg's third grade. But I'm keeping Weisenberg's third grade at 25. So you'd have to add a so that's every section. So Dr. Hansiger, for second grade to get to 25, you have to add six kids. You have to add them to every single section. To I mean, that, that's not possible because it's 100% possible. But you'd have to add them to every single section to get that high. That's not that it's not possible. Because same thing happened in Weisenberg's second grade. We went to 52, mm -hmm. which takes you to a... a um, and you just, it's also the composite of the kids. So I think Doc, um, Mrs. Senevitis asked it, you know, maybe last year, maybe the year before. So it's not always just about the numbers. We know things about the class and the composites of the class about special education needs and distribution of students. And so if you think back to the conversations we had when we talked about elementary reconfiguration, and it's also about the distribution of students and student needs and composites of classes and it's also difficult when you only have two sections to distribute needs and, and students across just two sections, depending on what you know about students and what students need and why we might make a recommendation to add a section. The, um... Do we think that the Northwestern, so you, you know, you're looking looking at the K and one uh, first grade, uh, there's really a mixed change here, right? You go from where Weisenberg had that 52, now we've got a 72 to 78 coming up through versus Northwestern at 57 to 56. Do we think that as we get into second, third grade, kids are coming into the district in, and the growth is coming in that way, or is there just this weird shift happening between the two schools? Yeah, there's like a weird bubble or change in the dynamic, I guess, across the two buildings. It's shifting in the right way in that we have capacity at Weisenberg, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. So we used to have better trends when kids came in after half day kindergarten yeah. because kids used to come in after like a full day St. Joe's and then you'd see the big, I'll say we used to see plus seven or plus eight coming into first. And, and that trend has disappeared in terms of you don't see that anymore. Kids come in in kindergarten and then they stay. I just but I don't have this like post COVID group. If you think about those second, third graders, you know, they were all the ones that were probably at home and going kindergarten. And they're, you know, they kind of were the impacted group that's going to maybe they went charter, maybe they went cyber. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And I don't know why the, the switch. And so they're, it's not following any of the enrollment trends, mm -hmm. it's not following any of the, the studies in terms of, in ter now again, they can't, they don't necessarily, they're not really good about the distribution of elementary schools in terms of where kids are going to fall distribution of elementary schools. They are better at telling you the live births, you know, they know when the kid's born, but they don't exactly know where they're going to go to school. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know why Weisenberg is seeing two kids. So I didn't know last year at that 70, it was a bubble, like a one year bubble, but now you're seeing two years of a 70 and a 72 coming into Weisenberg versus a 56 and a 57. But I mean, the 57, I mean, it's still 19, like it's still right in, and it's early. I mean, you're still talking about a March number and an April number and you're still running 19 at, at Northwest L. And so, so, could you get to a point where you say, yeah, we're, we have to cut off Northwest L and now everybody that registers from this point forward is going to Weisenberg. 
Mm -hmm. No, it just said nine more kids. So we'll throw it on. But that's what I'm saying. At some point, and we had that two years ago where Jill was calling families and saying, everybody that registered from this point forward was going to Northwestern Elementary because it was the opposite problem. And so she spent the whole summer calling families, and I, I believe they're on, so she can tell you what an the process that was trying to tell people about elementary school because then you're telling people, like, I'm sorry, you don't want this, but you're going because I don't have room for you here. I know it's the opposite way because we added the class at Northwestern Elementary because at the time we had title funding that could cover it because that's the other thing Northwestern Elementary has that can reduce class sizes that Weisenberg doesn't have. So we made the choice to add it at Northwestern Elementary to reduce class sizes. And then we moved kids from Weisenberg to Northwestern Elementary, even though because that's where we had the funding capability. Are you able to um, share? I remember Andrea saying um, there was an increase uh, of students with disabilities and the, the specialized learning and that we you know what goes with that. Um, is that in more in elementary, middle, high school? Where is that growth? Where, where are we seeing that mostly? Um, Andrea's on, so she certainly can ad address the distribution of numbers probably more accurately than I can. Yeah, it's across the board, but if you're it depends on what area of need you're talking about. I would say for emotional disturbance, we're seeing numbers grow in the middle and high school. Um, we've also had some referrals for academic or learning needs in the middle school, as well as the high, as well as the high school. The majority of them do come in the elementary, but um, the increase that I was referring to really relates to case study and then having to provide the need based on what we've learned from previous case law. Yeah, I think because that, that's important, right? So when we look at class size, and I'll say it again because it's relevant, there's lots of different needs. You know, when we look at students who are gifted or, you know, that need different things. And I think it's hard for one person to provide all of that. It's just a challenge. So I think that's just important to consider. And the other complicating factor, and I would be remiss if I didn't say this about Weisenberg, is the thing that this doesn't show is Weisenberg has four IU classrooms mm -hmm. um, if they, that don't ever appear on these slides um, that, that's, that are not anywhere on these slides, um, but that in, in many ways um, increase class size numbers and increase adults in classrooms. And so when you have IU classrooms, there are students that are integrated every single day in classes, um, many times in specialist classes. Um, and so there are students that are integrated. So when you do these divisible numbers, you're talking about class sizes of 17, 18, and now you have a few IU, uh, IU students from the IU classrooms that are integrated into classes. And now you have a few adults from the IU classrooms that are integrated in the classrooms and the classrooms are very busy. And Jill can certainly speak to that if she wishes, but that's not anywhere in the slides in terms of um, distribution of numbers and where we know students are distributed either. So in Weissenberg this year, we have uh, 25 in second grade that's going to go to third grade. Yeah, I think right. it's probably 51 or 52 now. Uh, when okay. we made the decision, it was 50, and we made a choice. I made a choice, a recommendation to you to run that at 225 slash. So we have that in red because it's one over what what we have as a the standard. And um, is there any is there any anecdotal or or factual data that shows that that 25 in the class is detrimental to the students? Learning. There's well, I thought you were asking about the class size last year. Are you talking about the one well, I have read no, now? I'm saying maybe I'm looking at this wrong, but it this year's second grade class is 25 and it's moving to third grade to 25, right? No, no I'm talking last I, yeah, last year. So mm -hmm. last year's this year's first grade class is 25. Okay. And then I am recommending moving that same class, which is 52 to 17s and 18s okay. in, in second grade. Okay. The one I am recommending, I'll say leaving at 25 is next year's third grade. Okay. And is there research about class size? No. Lots. Not, not research, but actual 
or anecdotal data that we can look at to see if that's really harmful. There's lots of research about class size, yes. And and this grade is the beginning of testing. There's there's lots of research about class size. It's a balance of what yes, there's lots of research about class sizes. Um it would be what you what you can afford. Yes, there's lots of research about lower class sizes. Is the answer to the question. So what would we measure? We would measure teacher stress and satisfaction perhaps, right? Are they strained? I'm even talking about academic data. Well, no, I, I was going there, right? Yeah. With academic outcomes of the children in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And I guess the question is, to Bill's point, if we have anything actual from this experience. call it experience or experiment to suggest that this particular 25 mm -hmm. is, is somehow harming students their outcomes were worse the teacher was more stressed uh, you know like what what do we what do we gauge yeah without going into a lot of detail i would say that some of those things are why we made the recommendation we did with first grade okay. i believe that yes we we need to recommend that that grade be increased, increased, reduced, yeah. increased class, it reduced class size, increased sections. Yeah, I'm not questioning your recommendation. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking, you know, we've had some experience with 25 where we say it should be 24. So, yeah, and, and I don't know how to make that negligible like 24 to 25. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that you'll never it's go. Like so, yeah, yeah, it's like that. So many variables that, uh, yeah. With right. Yeah, I don't. You'll never. I don't know how you'll figure out twenty-four to twenty-five. Like, yeah. but but when you're looking at differences, like you know, Dr. Unsiger pointed out, third grade at Weisenberg, seventeen, eighteen, second grade at Northwest L, twenty-three, twenty-four. Like that's where you're now making decisions. You're making recommendations, but. But this is where you float it the other way. You make a recommendation now, Dr. Hemsiger, to put four, call it at wise at Northwestern Elementary. And now you now you have really close class sizes, really low class sizes at Northwestern Elementary. Yeah. You could always make it lower. You you could always make it lower. Okay. I think what's also, I mean, challenging, if you could see which Lots of reasons why we can't see um, a makeup of a class because you don't know that yet, and you can't necessarily get into all those intricacies. But that matters because a 20, 25 for one class with not a lot of differentials versus another it matters. I think that's where I struggle, you know, because twenty five and third grade. I mean, this, this is the first time these kids are testing at the state level. And then, you know, depending on their, their variety of needs and the differentiation needed, that's tough. It's tough to see that. Um, just my opinion. You want to add another teacher in third grade? It's not budgeted. No, I don't have a problem with the recommendation. We added the kindergarten and we added the two, I'll say in first and second. It's peers in first, but it's really first and second. We added the two, so you'll see it on the on the recommendation slide. We added the two ads in Weisenberg and we added the kindergarten extra, I'll call it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll go to the end and then you can circle back if you want something different. Um, middle school, there's no changes at middle school. Middle school is this, probably the building that had the most significant changes over the last few years. They're the ones that um, have had the decreasing enrollment over time. So same same setup of the slide, six, seventh, and eighth on the left with related arts, same setup with your um, class size recommendations on the left, your sections, 
eighth grade is a little wonky in terms of the sections because of the additional responsibilities and the and the class sizes. Um, again, you'll see your class sizes. So by the time you see like the 133 in the middle, I don't have an explanation why some of them are floating 155 and one sections of 133. But we're not recommending any changes in staff um, at the middle school for six, seven, eight, or the related arts at the middle school. Any questions on middle school? Have we considered doing something different, like for middle school, being that it's like cert based and the fact that like we're having to like add additional responsibilities, know you know, to like just meaning like I know that it's teaming now, but like have we thought about maybe switching it up and doing like a grade level or something diff like some kind of different model so that this way, you know, the class sizes or like the way that things are distributed or are distributed more equitably you know, amongst all of the kids and staff that are, 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 you know, are in that grade, since you said it's wonky, and like sixth grade has six sections of 25, 26, but those teachers don't have any ad additional responsibilities. But eighth grade has the same number of sections, almost identical students, but those teachers have to take on additional responsibilities. So there's obviously something different amongst the make that like the makeup there. Well, they take on additional responsibilities because of the certification. So I think what you're suggesting would be an old, I'll call it junior high model, um, where they would lose the teaming. So my recollection is when we first went into this conversation, the staff were involved in that conversation and they preferred to keep the teaming model as opposed to going to a junior high model. So because of the, so the teaming model brings a lot of benefit in terms of connections with the kids and then being able to circle on the teams. So if they were to go to a junior high model, it would be subject based and not team based. So those teachers would teach, I'll call it English, and they would get 170 of those kids and they would teach English all day long. And it would be an old, I'll call it junior high model. I don't know a better name for it. Um, but then they wouldn't be teamed at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's the alternative to deal with certification. And so Aileen deals with the same thing. It would just look like a high school. It would look like a- That was my question. It would, it would almost like a be a step 12. before that. Yes. Yeah, it would look like a 712 high school essentially because they would, within the certification, just teach their subject and they would stick with their subject and they would rotate 170 kids in through their class teaching English all day long as opposed to teaching on a team. And so I think they wanted at the very beginning for the team, the teachers were at, that were at the middle school at the time that this conversation started when they knew they were going to have to do reductions, they would prefer, would have preferred to be able to teach multiple subjects as opposed to losing the teaming connection. I don't know if that's still the case, but that was their preference at the time. Yeah, that's kind of my, my question. Like, have we had these discussions and brought this back up and things like that oh, amongst I teachers. I'll, I have to ask Bill if it's been brought up back since, but that was a that middle school team was involved in that discussion. Only because as you see like the enrollment, like we have 133 then coming up the net, like which to me, you know, that's kind of where I am asking these questions is because you're going to have to do something um at some point, depending on the number of kids that are coming through, in order to keep those sections that either the the same or if you're going to change them, then you have to kind of start thinking outside the box. And I don't know if there's any other educational models, that's not my forte, besides teaming and or doing what, you know, I'm used to in the high school level, yeah, um, college level, but, you know, that's kind of why I'm bringing it up because it seems like there's going to need to be something, plus the additional responsibilities, like, you know, what does that really look like? And like, you know, how is how has that worked this past year? We've never, you know, we haven't heard anything about that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, is it truly, you know, is it something that's working or are we doing something just to justify having that many sections? Yeah, I mean, I, I think a little bit of both. I mean, I think in some cases, um, the, the other model would be a cross team where you cross two teams together in addition to a 6 six twelve model that you went back. I mean, sixth grade is for all intents and purposes, partially because of their certification in elementary teacher. They're certificated as an elementary teacher. And so they can essentially teach anything like an elementary teacher, mm -hmm. but the seven through 12 people could essentially function like a high school, like a seven through 12 old junior high model could. Mm -hmm. um, they lose the teaming, they lose all of that information that they formerly learned in terms of the old teaming model. They were involved, I'll have to ask Mr. Domingo as they have, they continue to be involved in that 
discussion, but I know he said that that's something they wanted to maintain, even if it meant they had to teach multiple subjects or take on additional responsibilities to be able to maintain that. Mm -hmm. I have a related arts question. Um, you mentioned, yeah, you classrooms at the um, elementary levels. So transitionally, um, does these numbers class size include any IU students? Um, middle school has one. Um, Andre, correct, one at the middle school and one at the high school? Classes, yes. Um, I don't believe they they are integrated as much at the middle school and high school. Is that an accurate statement? I honestly don't have access to the IEP, so I would have to consult with Bill and Amy about the related art schedules. I have, I have access to our students' IEPs, not theirs. But I would have to Go ahead, finish your Me? I just said I could find out if that's something that, you know, we need to know. Yeah, because I mean, if you're in an eighth grade related arts course and there's, let's say, three or four, you're at 30. So I was just curious what those and then more adults. Yeah, I, I, I will find out for you. Um, and I can certainly answer for the high school. Um, I don't believe the students are integrated as much as they are at the elementary school. So I don't necessarily think they, but I will double check that for you. And Aileen so you can certainly answer if there's integration from the high school. Um, but I, do, I think at the elementary school, because of the number of classrooms um, at Weisenberg, I think it is a different um, situation. Hi, can I? Yeah, I so, oh, you have the mainstream report. You right. know that. Yes. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. You would know so, that. Um, as the years have progressed, we are having less and less mainstream from those IU classrooms into our classrooms. Um, elementary, now this is for, we're in, we're in for, so this was for 22-23. We only had a total of 14.7 ADMs, which really is um, about 14 kids, so equivalent to 14 kids coming out for elementary, which would be all down at Weisenberg. Um, and we had only nine, nine for um, middle school as a secondary. So it's not, it's not a lot of time. So what, what she's looking at is, so when a student mainstreams into one of our classrooms, the report that Christie's looking at is you can financially bill proportionately to back to the district for what the student yeah. is resident. And let me rephrase it. The nine means nine days. So it was one student. Okay. So, so nine's a lot. So, yeah, it was one student yeah. for the middle school that came out and it was a total of it equated to nine days. Um, and the moment. So Christy does the mainstream report that fills the other students. So I forgot that she would have exactly the number of yeah. students because we, we would build those other districts when they come out into our classrooms. Sorry, Christy, I forgot that. No, that's okay yeah, if you can. I'm just making sure that the numbers aren't higher yeah, as you mentioned, I, I mean, I knew it, but I didn't know it. Yeah, yeah I, like 14 days for total 14 days. A lot. Yeah. So, being you know, Mrs. Holman, uh, the one thing you said that you kind of hit on the head, it, Jill and I have had this conversation every year about the students in elementary, and that's because it's more developmentally appropriate for them to be pushed out into those related arts courses. Then the reason you see that the decrease is because of as the students age up, they might be better served in the IU classroom having other instruction. Um, but I, I do have a text out to the supervisor to find out, you know, which students and how many, if, if you know, for, for the specific related arts courses, we can find that out. Um, the other thing is we, so if you recall last year at middle school, we did decrease one of the special education teachers um, and did not, so the, so the middle school had two special education teachers in each grade, two six, two seven, two eight. Last year, we 
um, due to retirement, did not replace one of the special education teachers. And last year, I told you that we would replace that special education teacher this year. We are not recommending replacing that special education teacher this year. We will be adding additional support in the middle school this year, but we will need to add that special education teacher likely next year. But just so you know, um, <clears throat> so we will run on two special education teachers in one grade, one special education teacher in another grade, and two in another grade as well. Um, but I wanted to follow up with you because last year I said we will have to add that this year. We will be adding additional special education support in the middle school. Um, but we won't be adding that additional special education teacher. Um, any additional questions on middle school? High school is where a lot of the changes are because now some of the classes, lower classes are moving to the high school. So high school, I'm Mr. Shadish and Mr. Gibber are here. So student enrollment, um, I don't typically give you student enrollment at the high school and because high school is a little more complicated in terms of it's not like straight division as you can expect. Um, and, she, and Mrs. Jadish and Mr. Gibbler do have some high, um, LCTI enrollments that get a little more complicated. You see her, um, their student enrollment across grades, 9, 10, 11, and 12. They do have some all day LCTI students that are involved that obviously go up to LCTI all day. Two things that are sort of up in the air that she doesn't have answers to yet is obviously students that have applied to go to LCTI that we don't have answers yet that might be accepted to their LCTI half day program. So when you see 30 applications, that means 30 students have applied, but we don't know how many of those students will actually go to LCTI. Same with 10th grade, 26 students go currently, but there are 24 additional students who have applied. That's why you don't see a total on the bottom. We don't quite know yet how many students will be in the half day program at LCTI. And if you could flip to the next slide. Right. Do you want to say anything else about your? I know not. Thank you. Um, the next slide will tell you our recommendations for staffing. So how this comes about every year is Aileen does her, um, her student um, requests. And all of the students put all of their requests in. And she looks at how many requests she has for each of the courses and how many sections of each that she needs. Um, and with a reduced number of students coming into the high school and she and I sit down and look at how many teachers she needs. And this is what it essentially flushes out. Now I will tell you, and she can certainly speak to this more than I, the class size ranges that are on the bottom will fluctuate depending on what students get what courses, which is why you see some ranges, and she can certainly speak to that better than I, um, depending on how that flushes out in the schedule and what conflicts it throws. We are recommending reducing a physical education teacher by a half, so we have a retirement of the physical education teacher this year, so we are recommending a half replacement of that teacher, combining it with another teacher. Um, reducing an English teacher, which is also a retirement, so we would not replace that teacher. We have one dual certified teacher that is currently dual, side of, dual certified in a science and a math. So that would be a reduction of math by four sections and a reduction of science by two sections. And you'll see some math and science sections there. We did pull AP out. So if you remember, Jenna just went in, I'm sorry. Is it yes. opposite? Is yeah. It opposite again? So sorry. it's a reduction of math by four That's what I said. and a reduction. They say two different things. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there's four so lines and then the bullet. The heading is just reverse. It's just four signs. Four signs. That's, four signs That's what he's going to be. <laughs> you have four signs slash two math, and then below it, it's math by four sections. Oh, so it's just. Did I opposite it? Yeah. She's going different. Or is that what it's going to be? Uh, like they're teaching four science and two math. So you yeah, he's going, math by the four person is going to be teaching two. four science and two math. Okay. okay. Got it. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Right? Yeah. I miss right. I miss. No, I just don't. Right. A dual certified person will be teaching <laughs> four science. I heard it differently. Sorry. Uh, okay. I think, uh, but I might have an opposite on the reduction. But I do have an opposite on the reduction. So I think you and I did this way in this conversation. So, because <laughs> I'm, I'm not surprised by it. Yeah, I was just going to say, because you had me flip it around. I'm like, do I have a So, the person is dual certified. The person will be teaching. So, every teacher can teach six sections. The person will be teaching four science sections and two math sections. 
I we pulled out the AP sections because if you can remember a couple of years ago, when you look at average class sizes, we do make choices in the high school to run some of our AP courses. I'll say low numbers because we want those opportunities for our students. So we didn't want to put on the slide like we have math sections at eight to thirty. We do have an AP class and a math class that's running at eight, um, but. That's an anomaly. We have an eight. We want to offer that opportunity to our students. We have a science class of an, eight, an AP section that's running at seven, but for the most part, math classes will be running fifteen to thirty, and our science class will be running eleven to twenty-four. But we do have two AP courses that are running smaller than that, and we're recommending reducing a special education teacher by a half. We will be combining the physical education and the special education teacher together. So those will be the half and half. Question. Yes. You're not reducing those AP classes. You're just noting it. No, I'm just noting them. Yeah. So the, the bullets underneath is to show you the class sizes yeah. so that you are so try, I was trying to make it comparable to the other slides so you can be comfortable with how how big or small the yeah. class sizes. Because like for physical education, us reducing that teacher by half will make those PE classes be Bigger than they are now. Cool. Bigger P, smaller AP, that's awesome. Hmm. You're just never going to have big AP classes. It's just a mathematical reality. Right. So I'm, we are noting the bullets below. So you can, it basically changes as you get older, Yeah. as the kids get older. So like our AP government classes are normal class size. They're like 25 to 30. And then AP calc, you know, 27 <laughs> is not that big because that just it, the, the pathways become more narrow. So yeah, age goes into it as well as level, of course. Do you want to explain any more about like how the because the class sizes will fluctuate? Yeah, class, class sizes at sizes. the high school are more difficult because of the different levels that we have. So Jen and I spent a lot of time like we always want to make our slides match, but they really are difficult to match at the high school level. So, you know, I don't take English 9 and just divide it by the number of sections. We take English 9 divided by the levels of English 9, then divided into the number of sections. Um, and that gets even more complicated because now we're giving more student choice in 11th and 12th grade as to what courses kids can take. So my projections are becoming, and I say my, I just want to give Nicole Zimmerman full credit because she does a lot of this data and number crunching for me. So she and I, we have to say, okay, now we split 11th and 12th graders can choose up to six courses for English, and then that becomes even more difficult. So when we divide the number, if I have 135 kids taking um, English 9, I'll stick with that, uh, academic English 9, and I do a division, so that's five sections of 27 kids. I had to just rem remind Jen, like those class sizes, even though it's five sections at 27, we always tell our teachers it's plus or minus five. Mm -hmm. So it could be the ideally that we have five sections of 27, but more likely I'm going to have one section of 32 and one section of 20, 22 <laughs> in the other direction. So that's when we end up with some of those class sizes that don't look realistic. And that's also uh, a compliment to our teachers and our counselors because we don't lock kids into a pathway. Um, just because you are in applied English doesn't necessarily mean you're taking applied history. You could be in academic history or academic math. So um, we really try not to pinpoint our kids into that pathway. We play to their strengths and that makes this process more difficult at the high school. It's a good problem. It's a difficult problem when we start getting into class sizes that we're starting to see. And as much as we tried to project where these numbers were going to go, I was off, which bothers me greatly. But I was off as to exactly <laughs> how this was going to affect things. And that's why Jen and Nicole spend a lot of time with me um, running these numbers and, and coming up with a what I think is um, a best case solution for our kids at this point because we still want to offer as mr lezer said we still want to offer those classes to the kids who need it both at the high not end only that it sounds the, like what you're doing is you're saying look i'm not going to tell a kid they can't take a class because they're that one kid that probably is equal for the last three that you left in but like you're Correct. creating an artificial barrier there that i yep. think you're 
giving the flexibility they need, which I think is great. Yes, and you know, thanking all of you and, and past boards, you've also seen the benefit to that. So we thank you as well for that and saying, you know, I might have a class of eight in AP micro econ. The second one. Um, but you know, that's a second level econ class that we're offering in a, in a relatively small high school. So we're really fortunate that our kids have that opportunity. And in fairness, it keeps them here. I don't get a lot of calls for get me out of here faster um, because we have those opportunities for the kids. So we're thankful for that. So there are no furloughs, but we are making recommendations with some retirements to make some reductions of the high school. Um, I think the numbers of class sizes are still um, doable. Um, all of the staff that are affected, some of which they need to pick up some additional certifications in order to do the jobs that we're asking them to do. I've all been spoken to last week. Mr. Jadish um, did all of that last week in order to make some of the recommendations that you see on the slides here. Um, I don't know if surprises for what we put out on Friday. I, I just have a sort no, of, no, it's a certification question. So if I'm an, if I'm an English certified teacher, how many different English courses, you want to call them, how many preps, planning, mm -hmm. um, could I potentially have in a semester? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. But those could then be different again, second semester. It could. So we're, we're, that's another piece that gets thrown into this. We really try to be cognizant of that, um, especially when it comes to the sciences, mm -hmm. because they not only could have different preps, they also cannot have different preps because of their specific certification. Mm -hmm. um, working with Mr. Sunday, that department chair was great, and that department was also awesome. Um, they're, I think, running at most four preps a year. Mm -hmm. I think we try to keep it at four. Some people choose to take more because they like what they're teaching and they're willing to teach those kind of, I'll say, unique classes like um, math is especially when we have programming and engineering and things that not everybody wants to teach in the math department so that teacher is very willing to take on more preps a year um there the department chairs are great about divvying up um different levels of courses as well we don't tend to have a lot of people teaching one level of course we like to give everybody that experience and give every student the experience with the different teachers as well so, um, yeah, preps will become more prevalent mm -hmm. as we bring more smaller classes into the high school. Um, I try to spin it by saying if you were in an eight course eight day, you'd probably be there anyway. But we've just been really lucky over the years. And everyone has recognized that. We spent a lot of time over the years looking at enrollment and the high school teachers. When I tell you they took this news and were as fantastic as could possibly be, it was true because I was not looking forward to last week. But um, every single person we spoke to pretty much volunteered to do anything we asked them or asked them if they were interested in. So awesome, thank you. Any other questions for high school? Hey, last slide is the summary of all the recommendations that are included in the budget that Christy will go into if you don't have any other um, recommendations or ads. So we are recommending adding two teachers at Weisenberg, um, reducing the one special education teacher at Northwestern Elementary, reducing one half special education teacher at the high school, one half physical education teacher at the high school, one English teacher at the high school, just divided this up to 0.66 math teacher at the high school, 0.33 science teacher at the high school, continuing to watch kindergarten enrollments. We did add the kindergarten teacher, although we could need to move additional elementary school students to balance the enrollments. There are four professional retirements that we are recommending replacing at this time. Special educate. There is an additional special education teacher retirement at the high school we're recommending replacing an MTSS teacher at Weisenberg, a middle school counselor, which is the one that you hired this evening, and the an additional teacher at Northwestern Elementary that we are um, 
replacing. Other questions about the staffing that you will see incorporated into the April update that Christy will go into the financial numbers for in a moment. Chris, he's on. It's on me. So, like Jen said, um, the staff changes are reflected here in the salaries um, line item for our April update. The difference between March and April is a reduction in expenditures of 188,000 and um, an increase in the revenue of 187 thousand dollars. Um, to lower our shortfall to $3.2 million. Now, expenditures still can change. This isn't the final um, dollar amount since we don't have our fuel bid in that is awarded April 30th, and we don't have our insurance numbers in. And they, I just talked to them last week, and they should have them to me by the end of the month. So they as long as everything goes well, will be reflected in the May proposed final budget. Um, our revenue has been updated. Um, we looked at the transportation report that we received for 23-24, and um, we are receiving more reimbursement than we did the year before. So I did increase that um, reimbursement from the state on the line item for transportation. And we just got the announcement yesterday um, that Gover Governor Shapiro's office um, certified the property tax relief money, quote unquote, the homestead farmstead deduction for uh, homeowners in the district. Um, they have committed $900 million towards that um, funding for the reductions for um, the gaming money, you could say. Um, which is up, and the budget secretary has certified that this amount is the amount is sustainable for the next five years. So that will be an increase to our property property relief line item for revenue. Um, what it will be, I won't know. We will have certification certified a lot allocation numbers by May first. So just to give you a little history, um, in 21-22, the state allocated $621 million. We received about $674,000. Um, in 22-23, they allocated $778 million. We received $848,000. And this year, they certified $777 million, and we received $849,000. So it goes by what the county certifies as homestead farmsteads in our district and what our allotment is driven out to be. So our millage options. Um, on this slide, we have a 4% tax increase, 4.6 or a 5.3 tax, which is the max that we can get. Out. So the estimated revenue Generate it by a 4% tax increase would be about 1.28, which to the average taxpayer would be an increase of $167.97 and would lower our estimated use of fund balance down to $1.9 million. With a 4.6 tax increase, the estimated revenue is 1.4. The increase to an average taxpayer would be a approximately $193, and that would reduce our estimated use of fund balance to 1.7. And then the 5.3 could generate up to an increase of 1.7 million in revenue. The increase to the average taxpayer is $220, and that would lower our estimated use of fund balance to $1.5 million. Um, we're looking for some guidance on what you want me to bring back for the proposed final um, as far as an increase with the millage. Do you need that tonight? 
Exactly. Yes, because unfortunately, I have a week to get the proposed final budget ready for you guys. Okay. What was Just Act One this year? Five point three. Act One. The Act One index. Yeah, five point three. Is five point three four twenty three okay. so for the twenty four twenty five school year. for this coming school year? It's five point three. The max that we can you get. You asking what it was this past year or no? That's oh, five. With Homestead Farmstead, mm -hmm. is that lowering what we're bringing in on taxes, but then we're getting correct? Yes, so balance it's a out. Wash. It's a okay. It's a wash. All right. Yes, because I'll reflect that. So if we say the state comes back and says we're getting seven hundred thousand dollars, I'll reduce that in my line item for current revenue received for the tax bills. Okay. But then in the bottom with the state revenue, okay. that money will be reflected. Okay. So our recommendation is remain the same. You just need to tell us your comfort level with what you want a lot of fund balance in terms of the tax increase for proposed time. 4.508. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Is that the will of the board? You know, you so you're the five or two, right? <laughs> I was looking to see if well, anybody was well, uh, what, objecting to that. So are you proposing the nice one? You, you didn't give a recommendation. Yeah, you, you, you asked for options. Yeah, you, what you asked for was options. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, last year we just came with the Act 1 index. Oh. And you're recommending? Or on the next. Yeah, yeah, throwing that out there, throwing that on the yeah, table. Yeah, we we need. Yeah, <laughs> what we would need for proposed final. But we can't bring you options for proposed final. For proposed final, we need a number. Right. Can't bring you options. So Correct. you're recommending the five point three. Is that what you said? Yeah, and if you flip to the next slide, if you want to know what the where the difference will be, we essentially yeah. would take so you always ask where where would we take it out of fund balance? Yeah. We would essentially take the same amount out. The difference would actually come from the state and federal uncertainty. So we would we would that's where so you we would take the same out of every place except for state and federal uncertainty. Correct. We'd keep all the Scholarships and may as well do we keep those all yes as they've always mm -hmm. been. So our differential would be in that category. Budgetary reserve would be the same, our fleet replacement would be the same, all of them would be the same, but you'll see the difference in the state and federal uncertainty when when we roll that forward with where we'll, what will you will take out of fund balance given your three options. Right. And don't forget, like so the energy stabilization. We may not have to take the 249 out, depending on what comes back with our fuel bid. And also, I also looked at um, our fuel consumption at the pump, and I feel that we can reduce that with what we have been spending at the pump for our gasoline vehicles. So that's not reflected in this. That'll be reflected in the proposed final. Yeah, depending on our fuel, that would flux up our use of that. Right. Well, this is a tough decision. I'll, I'll, I, I agree. I mean, I think it's probably prudent for us to kind of do this. Um, and I'll kind of go back to last month's slide where we, you know, look at kind of the worst case scenario, what our fund balance is going to do in, in the five years. Now, I know that's a little bit extreme, but the reality is there's no denying it's on that trajectory, right? So, you know, the more we can do today, we'll slow that curve in the future. So uh, I'm in agreement to, just to kind of put a stance out there that adds any comfort to helping other people make a decision, yay or nay. <clears throat> and like I said last month, two weeks ago, um, the Act 1 projections are now going yeah, down. That was right. This was the high. That was my 
Yeah, I look at that the same. I mean, the, the fund balance forecast, even if we push out a few extra years, eventually bottoms. Yes, yes. and I can tell you, I update. Um, I just got new numbers for our total assessment, and it's gone up with recent sales of property. So we'll have, by the time we actually roll out July 1st bills, there may have been a few more properties that have been sold and have a higher assessment value than what we had last month. But even all of that still says, okay, even if we don't have to pull 1.5 million out of fund balance, we're pulling out a million. We're yes. pulling out, you know, we're not really going to get to the point here where right. anytime soon we're not running a deficit Correct. unless we resolve for this underlying base and right. find a way to close this couple of million dollar gap that we see sure. over. Right. Close it now and then right. you know taxes may not need to increase three years from now, four years from now at the same level. But right now we're in a makeup zone from what was it, seven, five years, seven years of no tax Correct. increase. And we're, we're kind of paying That's that so price for not having done that. To keep up the pace, even a Just point a or little, two back right. then would have given us. Now we're trying to catch less than that. Yeah, okay. and two million dollars, give or take, right? We yeah. still increase the property values. And so if we go, if we stick with that one and a half million out of uh, fund balance, mm -hmm. and we get to next month, and the state comes through with some money that we're not anticipating, which we probably shouldn't anyway. Uh, right. <laughs> would we reduce the tax increase or would we uh, would reduce, the reduce, reduce the amount we take out of fund balance? Right. Reduce the amount out of fund balance. Because okay. then we would, we would show those revenues, the increase in revenues. So then that would decrease the fund balance use. Mm -hmm. So we could not just say, okay, we're going to cap that one, one million five oh eight and if we get more money than what we're anticipating, right. we reduce the taxes, tax increase. The timing doesn't work for us. All right. Is there any precedent for paying back direction. taxes? We over collect taxes that we have to pay back. No. No, once you set your rate, <laughs> not your rate. That's sort of what Bill's getting to, I think. He's afraid we're going to collect too much. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. No, no. I'm just saying, let's come back and set 5.3, maybe we do a 5.2 or 5.1. I think if they settle it sooner, but I'm not anticipating yeah. it'll be settled before you right. set your tax rate. That's I mean, what I think the problem I'm having. Well, we're not voting on this, we're just giving you guidance, right? Yeah, you're, right. you're giving us guidance to bring back that number on a proposed final budget because the okay. next thing we bring back to you is a proposed final budget is going to have that number in. Right. If it gets settled before oh, then, right. I think that's a different story, right. but I don't anticipate that will happen. Mr. Delaker, if you. I did do 5% just in case. Okay. <laughs> so the estimated revenue, if we would do a flat 5%, would be um, an increase of 1.6 for millage. The average tax collector of taxpayers increase would be like $209. And the use of fund balance would be 1.6. One to be exact, 1,606,172. It's a little more than a hundred thousand difference. Between. Correct. Yes. And then you would just use that and uh, take it out of the federal or state. Correct. Yeah. I think I'll stick to the five point three. There's too much unknown. Can anybody else have a thing? Well, I need one more. All right. Well, three. there's four. Bill, are you five three? Mm -hmm. Yeah, four. I think Joe nodded his head earlier. Oh yeah. Okay, so we will bring you a budget, a proposed final budget with 5.3 in it. If for some reason they settle the budget before then, we will opinion and we will make adjustments i think the only thing we're waiting for is the fuel so when and insurance on insurance and fuel and insurance which we will mm -hmm. have to know about bill and if they mark a cyber charter bill yeah. we could reduce that by 
$300,000, maybe. <laughs> that was estimated. So insurance and fuel. Any additional questions on this? I have a comment for a question or an observation. Back on slide four. Uh, the and and you stuff. said you never showed us class size before. You'll probably never do it again. That's right. That's the high school? No, this is interesting. Yeah, <laughs> you're the you're high on the high school, school staffing? Number four. Next yeah, the high school staffing, where it says grade 9, 10, mm -hmm. 11, 12. Mm -hmm. That one. Mm -hmm. um, so our graduating class is going to, in grade 12 next year, is going to be 168 students. Mm -hmm. Is that how many diplomas we had on? Yes. And uh, if you look at the slide, so we go on 168 next year. The year after that is 163, 152. And if we go on the previous slide, the uh, it's going to be 156 and 133. I mean, it's really mm -hmm. up and down. And I remember not too long ago, it was like 180. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And uh, so the uh, so what's causing that? Are we just lowering our population or is this homeschooling charter school yeah, uh, parochial school right, right. Taking them out of the class? <laughs> there's no, yeah, there's I mean, no if you look at our enrollment report we don't have a lot more going to homeschool or parochial school i mean we have some more going to charter and cyber school but i mean this is the so when aileen mentioned earlier that that she was pleased that our conversation so this is the conversation we've had with our staff district wide and so like when aileen mentioned earlier like we've had these conversations with Bill started with his middle school staff. We have classes leaving of 180 now. We got classes coming in of 114. Bill's had that conversation three, four, five, six, seven, eight years. Aileen has had that conversation at the high school. Guys, we got four years coming. We got classes leaving of 189 and our elementary class is coming in at 114. And so like last year, she said, guys, next year, <laughs> next year we got classes leaving of 189 and you have classes coming in at 168. And so that's a full class, like little class, like class. And so you get so many of those classes that come in and your population decreases significantly. And so now you start to see, I'll say that class at the high school, which is why you see some of the reductions in the high school, but you have classes. So when, when we were handing diplomas out on the porch, you were handing 189s, 192s. Mm -hmm. Now you're handing, Mr. Hernandez is handing 168s, 163s, 165s, 152s. Um, you know, Bill's got 156, 133, 151s. But you have elementaries in some cases of 122. 114s, 122s. So where are they going? Are they Parkland. Just making babies? No, I mean, look at Parkland, right? Parkland's adding <laughs> adding schools and yeah, adding houses in a much bigger <laughs> Parkland. No, but the growth is going to Parkland. The growth in the area. Right. And, and, we don't, and we don't have any land yet to build houses. Yeah, I mean, there are not yeah. a lot of houses going up. The people that are moving in are staying. Um, our enrollment report over time is not significant. I mean, it's decreasing. You can see the decrease, but other areas are not significantly growing up. Char 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 Charter and Cyber has. I mean, over, we're keeping it pretty steady at 100. But over time, when you're talking about years and years ago, there was no cyber charter. So 100 is 100 more. Yeah. But they, there's not a significant increase in homeschool or parochial because we collect both of those numbers. Um, so it doesn't appear they're going homeschool or, or parochial. Which is not, they're yeah. not here. It's people staying in their homes. I think it's people yeah. staying without yeah. children. Not without children. Up their homes yeah. or people yeah. like, yeah. like my mom and dad. So I was just saying, you know, my parents live in a huge house. They live in like two rooms because, and, and they're not because they don't want to, they don't want to sell. Because they have to spend a lot more money to get something that's like not as fantastic as what they have, so they just put up with you know. But that's a macro yep. level, and but that's really what was amiss when you think about the the study that was done in the past ten years, eight, eight or ten years. Well, the other thing is too at uh, planning commission meetings, almost every month, people are bringing in ten to a hundred acres for online preservation. Where the most and that just Correct. You know, where just, are our kids going to live? There's no land. Yeah. Well, we're the most preserved farmland in Lehigh County, um, and so I, I don't, I don't, 
I don't know that that's going to change, but I mean, that was when Aileen mentioned like they, they have clearly heard us in terms of the, ch I don't know that this is changing. You look at why we're, we're decreasing enrollment across the board. So all yeah, right. that. That's all I wanted to bring up as a discussion. Well, there it's may be kinda, I just got, I'm pulling it up right now. Um, Nine properties that reached their 319 status. So they're looking to break it. They broke it. So they're getting exception right. bills because they broke it, the 319. Yeah, so I remember that they're getting ready to sell something. They may be selling something. Yeah, Part they broke them. something off. Yeah. Yeah, I remember For years ago, decades ago, when we used to monitor building permits to get Correct. ready for the, the yes. influx of students we still do there just aren't a lot of them coming just there. Not not there. they just they're not i mean we get single phone calls that so and so that's i mean that's the long-term outlook right now if you just snapshot where we're at we don't have a lot of lower priced homes that are suited for that young family mm -hmm. we have a community that has said we don't want warehouses we want you to raise our taxes we want to live in this we've got farmland that's preserved so you know you have an inflationary environment that's going to see salaries increasing costs increasing i mean you just step back and look at the macro view of this and this says that it's going to get more and more expensive for less and less kids kids I mean, I mentioned to the board um, and in the Friday report, so we we presented to the foundation the budget. Christy was there, but then um, I did a similar presentation to the middle school PTO. And I mean, we mentioned the warehouses and we talked about the TIF and a lot of people didn't know what the TIF was. So we explained the TIF and they kind of said like, why don't more people know about this? And and I said, because, you know, so we talked about the TIF, we talked about the warehouses, and we talked about the taxes and I talked about you know the expense to live here in some cases and you know the preserved farmland and the ordinances in the township and he kind of said why don't people know about this and i said well i don't know i don't know so we kind of took the budget on the road show about and it was not this version because this wasn't out yet it was we did we presented the one you had already seen um but said like we're in a situation where there's there we're almost at a precedent that we can't raise taxes enough to even afford what we have and we're going to be at a point where we when your kids get to the place like the middle school it's not going to look like what you think it's going to look like because we can't keep the things that you all love to have because we can't afford it um and and we're trying to keep the things we have um and that did not fall on deaf ears. I had people no, message me after that oh. meeting saying, in a good way, it's okay, like, because they <laughs> didn't know. So, <laughs> but I, you know, I look at this beautiful artwork and I think 10 years from now, the boards that are sitting here, that might not exist. Those programs might not exist 10 years from now because that's something we just literally might not be able to fund, right? There's like, district yeah. playoff games we all love to talk about. People are those teams going to exist 10 years, 15 years from now? I mean, we got to the mandated, non mandated side, and like we went through like kindergarten, we made P classes, and we talked about like low class sizes and sports and transportation. And I know you love all those things, but they all cost money, and they're all things we devote money to. Um, but they cost money. And I said, I said, I was approached at Weisenberg last year that somebody said when they didn't like one of the high class sizes and said, Can't you raise our taxes more? And I said, Literally, for the last five years, we have raised taxes to the max. I can't raise taxes. We cannot raise taxes more. We cannot raise taxes more. You don't know like one exists either. I mean, people just don't know. Yeah. Unless you're involved, Correct. you don't know. Yeah. And and you can't go out there in five minutes and give them no, the right. answers. It's uh, yeah. right. It's a long process to understand. What but that's why sometimes, like we ask, like the question. It's not that maybe we don't know the answer, but sometimes it's just good to have that dialogue out there. Yeah. Because again, like you're saying, unless you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I've learned over the past couple of years, <clears throat> and there's a lot of more things I'm sure to learn. But I just think that sometimes, unless you know, like I see a lot of stuff about this TIF and like you know, oh, but it's like ultimately, like we didn't necessarily have a say in that, like that it was locked. Like it, part of it is how things work at like a state 
level, you know, or a township level or whatever level, you know, but that's where I just think it's good to sometimes to just have this dialogue because this might have been talked about 10, 15, 20 years ago, but, you know, on some of us, you know, a lot of us were not here for that. And then as the communities change and people move in and out, people don't know the back history of what transpired. So I think it's a good re reminder to get some of that information back out again. Yeah, I mean, we went through the stuff. We went through the warehouse. We, I said, there was there was an individual on the foundation who didn't know about the yeah. stuff. So we I mean, I didn't. Know. But there was also an individual on the foundation who made the same comment Sir Lizer did about this is what the people want. They don't want industry in the district mm -hmm. yeah, because somebody said somebody said why don't people why don't people go to the meetings and request they change the ordinances and there was somebody said oh you you don't they don't and like they that they um they had that conversation um about oh yeah you they don't want like so they they had that conversation about yeah there are some people that don't want that and so they they recognized really yeah, quickly yeah heard the german the german saying or something yeah, about there's a, another phenomenon going on right now that we learn about in this planning commission with the uh the farmers the farmers get calls almost weekly mm -hmm. to buy their land from out of state from corporations, from you know, mega agricultural people, and uh, solar. You know, buy the farmland and put solar panels mm -hmm. on. So I mean, there's a lot of that stuff going on right now. It's competing for where we're going to put our kids in there. You know, when they leave home and they want to live around here. So anyway, that was a good discussion. Thank you for putting students in the moment. I guess, so, you know, the last thing I would say on that point, though, is I, I, I think we're blessed that we have such a high quality product, right? This district is producing a very, very high quality product. And if we start losing that, I think this conversation changes quite a bit, right? So that's when I talk about AP classes. And, you know, this is a very high producing district. If this was not a high producing district and we had the same issue, we would probably be thinking about it very differently. Right? We would be looking at it and saying we don't need these AP lots and I think we could really challenge. So I think we have a good opportunity here, but it isn't going to be easy for the next five to eight years. I think the reason is because of that. It's acceptable because people it's acceptable. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, the next item, uh, Northampton Lehigh County Local Share Assessment Grant. So I put this in your um, board mm -hmm. agenda. This will be more, I'll say, talked about by Mr. Hannon next um, month. It is a little out of order because it is on the Master Facilities Plan, but I believe it opens in May. Um, and so this is a grant that um, Jason found um, that is up for $350,000. This is Mr. Castellano is not here tonight, but he would be the one that would need to actually sign this. Um, uh, there's no matching for it, but it is for the lights in the stadium. So the lights in the stadium are on our master facility plan, but they there's no year attached to them, and actually there's no dollars attached to them. It's not been something that I'll say um, has been at the forefront, but they are 28 years old, um, and it is probably something at some point in the near future you'll need to talk about, um, but there obviously have been things that have been on the agenda way before the lights, but Jason did find the grant and thought it would be something that we we should put in for. The grant opens in May. This is just giving us the authority to apply for the grant. No matching, um, obviously, if it's something that they can get, he can get money for, we can get money for. I didn't want to not get us in the queue if it opens in May, which is why I put it on before the master facilities plan opens. So I do have some information about the lights if you need them but they it will be on the master's facility plan when mr mckenna goes over it next month um it's been on the master this master's facility plan for some time and the stadium upgrades and the um, field house for some time just not within a year or any funding attached to it so we would like permission to put in the grant because it opens in may and i believe it's a queue i'm just curious does the 350 cover um, there, it, it does. Um, it covers the installation and the replacement of the lights. So moved. Yeah. Second. Second. All right, does anybody have additional comments on this one? Yeah. Oh, just a question. Thanks. 
is this brand just for stadium lights or can you use it for other I believe stuff? you can use it for a number of things. But we would go for this grant for stadium lights. Yes. So we don't need the 350 for anything else. I think there are some other things you can use it for, but I believe that that's what um, that's a priority. Mm -hmm. That is what that that is one of the things that's on there that you can use it for. An yeah. electrical upgrade, and these would be to use it for LED and L an LED upgrade. Oh, it's an energy thing. I don't think it's an energy thing. <laughs> okay. So by the way, solar panels are not good. No, solar panels are not good. Okay. <laughs> Jason, would you like to answer? I didn't think you were going to be on. What, John? I said, would you like to yeah, yeah, just to uh, just to answer Mr. Delaker's question, Mr. Delaker, this is this is part of the gaming grant um, that they, they uh, get monies from the casinos, obviously, in the gambling in Pennsylvania. This is just an opportunity. You have to, you have to do a specific, you know, apply for a specific project. But so the stadium lighting project would fall under that a, a, a category. But there are other projects we have we could also apply for using this grant. Okay. For our yeah, I didn't think it was any harm any foul that comes through it comes yeah. through and didn't want to prevent us from getting the cue sooner than later. Yeah. Anyone else? All right, we go to the bushes. Oh, John, are you Johnny trying to say something? You're good. All right. All right. We do have motion to second, so uh all those in favor, aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, no. All right, well, guys, good luck. Uh, let's see, next item, uh, CLIU facilities plan. Sure, I can take that one. This is a yearly item. It's a routine item that shows location changes for IU programming throughout Lehigh and Carbon counties for the 24-25 school year. This document was approved by the student, or um, sorry, the facilities plan committee on March 12th, and then the CLIU board on March 18th. And the second document that you see within there is the yearly item that outlines those dates for voting for those IU facility recommendations. And on this document, we basically notate our voting and then return the document to the IU. There's minimal changes this year. Mainly, it's a location change for two of the uh, centers based programming. And in um, Carbon County, there's no changes. Well, we do have to take action on this, right? And that action would be to approve the resolution. Uh, and is that also the vote then? So if we approve it, then that's giving a yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Motion. All right. After answer, okay. Second. Mr. Eisner. Okay. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So let's see. The next handful of items we did met at the uh, workshop meeting two weeks ago. So uh, I'll read them off, and if we can take them in consent, uh, we will. So 6.04 is the Fox Rothschild Legal Services Agreement. Uh, this is approval for fees for special legal services uh, for the attachment on our agenda. Uh, 6.05 is the Republic Services. And this is approval to continue craft services uh, with a uh, slight increase. 6.06 uh, .06, CLIU Intergovernmental Agreement for Special Education Services. Uh, 6.07 is the CLIU notice of adoption of policies, procedures, and use of funds. And 6.08 is uh, Tiger Concession Fund transfer to the general fund. So moved. Thank you. Those comments, questions? All those in favor, aye. 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 Those no? All right, motion carries. 6.09 uh, reports. Any changes? No updates? No updates? Okay. So moved. Second. Adam? All right. All those in favor, aye? Aye. aye. Opposed, no? All right. Motion well, carries. Next item are the bills. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I'll say the motion to pay the bills. 
Second. Second, Dr. Hunsker. Comments, questions? I think we would have had an abstention. It doesn't matter. She's not going to vote. Okay. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All right. Other reports. First uh, on there is the enrollment. So this is the report. If you look at what I was referencing earlier, you'll see the decrease in enrollment, but you don't necessarily see a huge increase in any of the other areas. In fact, you see a decrease over time in non-public schools. Um, cyber charter, you see an increase in, but we're holding pretty steady around 100. Um, I mean, homeschool has gone up over time, and cyber charter has gone up over time. Non-pub has gone down, so it's been 200s. Mm -hmm. Now it's down to 146. So we're not necessarily going to non-public schools. If anything, homeschool or cyber charter. Mm -hmm. Homeschool is cost. No, no. They could they get GEDs homeschool. They they can. Um, but the, they would have to go take the, They can. They would have to take a GED test. Um, to to get the GED. But don't we have some say in the curriculum? You monitor them, don't you? They have to not monitor. They have to, the parent has to submit stuff to us because the, the educator or the person yeah. monitoring the program is their parent. And then they have to have it evaluated at the end of their year by an evaluator. They have to they submit stuff to us. So what do they end up with after their 12 years as far as legal reporting, as far as like not, a diploma? Nothing from us. Homeschool students get no diploma from us. Right, but what is their certificate? So when they go to apply for a job, they high school diploma, they just say no? They don't get a high school diploma. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says homeschool. homeschool certificate, and that depends on what kind of program they're in as well. Okay, it's curious. But they are accepting them for post-secondary institutions. Okay. Thank you. We just happened to have a kid this week who was something we were connecting with. We've gone through it then. Okay, uh, let's see. Other reports. So 7.02 is the foundation report. Hi, good evening. Um, two things to report tonight. The next Tiger Takeover will be this Friday, August 19th from 3 to 8 p.m. at Eight Oaks Distillery. So all are welcome to attend that. And then also they have the Tiger run and fun walk on Sunday, May 19th at Onalani Park, which includes both a 5K and a 10K and also a one mile walk. Registration is also available on the website nwlef.org. So hope you all can attend. Thank you. Okay, next item, committee reports. Uh, intermediate unit, do you have anything today? Yeah, we met on Monday. Um, Tuesday, sorry, Tuesday, June 18th is their annual golf outing. Um, they went over that the auditor's report came back with a clean report, no findings. Um, we had a presentation on the MDS room, which is multiple disabilities support classroom and how they serve students. Um, currently there's 56 students enrolled across the county, both Carbon and Lehigh with nine classrooms. Um, and again, with two counties. Um, and they really highlighted the communication devices that they use with kids, which is like amazing. Um, and a, and a, like a site communication aid where students will actually look into something and based on their how they look at a different image that will communicate back to the teacher. It was really amazing um, to see. Um, and it just kind of reiterates why we do what we do and support what we support. And that's it. All right, thank you. Uh, LCTI. Oh, the Rachel. Um, I think. Oh no, it's LCTI. I think there was something attached, but they're both okay. LCTI. Yeah. Uh, and LTIC, we do have a couple of attachments there. Uh, so recommission that'll be me. Uh, I'll just share that. Uh, Night in the country, the big event that we have. Uh, we are, and I'll share it publicly here. We are entertaining a uh, beer tent this year, uh, similar to what uh, uh, Kempton Fairgrounds does. So we're kind of using that as kind of a model. We haven't talked to anybody, but uh, it is something we are we are looking into. So there may be uh, a beer tent at this year's. <laughs> 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 really? 
Right next to the cow block. Yeah, that's right. So that's kind of all that's been going on in the recognition. Um, besides the fields, normal maintenance. Uh, kiddos are out there. Uh, spring sports have kind of started. So good to see them out there. Uh, next item, uh, old business. Does anybody have old, any, any old business for the board tonight? All right, saying not new business. Is there any new business out there? That saying none, I'll move right into communications. Courtesy of the floor. Who's going to control that tonight? <laughs> Courtesy of the floor, no one's here. So I'm at the next one. Next, as I'm on. Secretary, is there any communications with the secretary? I don't, I don't believe so. Nope. No. All right, so administrative sharing. Gotcha. Um, um, who's going to have to do that? I'll, I'll take that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we will start online with Jill Burlett. Good evening. Um, last week, we held our kindergarten registration at Weisenberg. It was a wonderful two days. We had the opportunity to meet our incoming Tigers and their families. The students were very excited, as well as the teachers were busy preparing and looking forward to welcoming, welcoming them back in August. Everyone is also busy preparing for the upcoming PSSA tests. ELA testing will begin on Monday, April 22nd. Math testing will begin on April 29th. And fourth grade students will also take the science assessment beginning May 1st. The students have been working very hard and we're proud of the effort they demonstrate each day. Our third grade musical will be held on Tuesday, May 7th at 7 p.m. Mrs. Gassessa and the third grade teachers have been working with the students and they are super excited for this upcoming event and sharing um, all their songs and their acting skills. It's sure to be a great evening. Thank you. Okay, and we'll move to Mrs. Keyes. Hello, good evening. Um, we just had an amazing week at Northwestern Elementary with our week-long author visit with David Bedricki. Um, thank you to the foundation for funding this wonderful experience for our students. As Mrs. Burlett said, students and staff are busy preparing for the PSSA testing over the next two weeks. We have a glow party for terrific tiger behavior on Friday morning this week um, to celebrate students' hard work during the third marking period. They're very excited for that. Um, third grade will be visiting the Klausville Schoolhouse, and fifth grade will visit Hawk Mountain on field trips at the end of the month. Uh, it's hard to believe that we're nearing the end of the year so quickly. Thank you. This is Edmonds. Nothing further from me. Thank you. This is Stitzel. Nothing further from me either. Thank you. Mr. Zimmerman. I uh, just want to give a shout out because I don't think uh, they had their uh, fin debate finals uh, last board meeting or la last time we shared, but uh, very proud of our debate team who uh, ended up placing second in the league in a hotly contested final. Uh, it was very close and they only lost by a point or two. And obviously, uh, you know, when, when they're scoring that, it's, there's a lot of uh, objectiveness to it. So uh, great job to Mrs. Pace and, and the, the kids uh, debate team finishing second place in the LDIDA this year. Thank you. That's everything. Okay, I'm going to hand you Mr. Good evening, members of the board, administrative team. I just want to offer, firstly, a congratulations to Mrs. Siler and all the wonderful artists that were here with us this evening. I've been scoping out the work, seeing if I can't get the kids to give it to me for my office. Um, but uh, not before it's enjoyed in Oregon for quite some time, I think, over the summer as well. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I noticed on our uh, personal agenda, Mr. Haddad was selected at the middle school, and I had the privilege of working with Mr. Haddad at the high school while he interned with us and completed his program in the guidance. And I can't think of a better person for the middle school in that role as guidance counselor. Uh, I'll give him my formal congratulations when I see him next month at the board meeting. And then finally, Keystone information was sent to high school families this afternoon in, in an email. Uh, parents can find a letter from high school administration outlining the Keystone exams, schedule the upcoming Keystone exams, which will be on May 15th, 17th, and 21st. And then a parent information guide on what to expect on the Keystone exams, as well as some best practices in preparing your student to take the exam. Um, in addition to that, Students who are testing have been notified and final preparations are underway in their classrooms. 
for a best result in May. Thanks so much. Thanks, Adam. Uh, thank you. Just to follow up again on Mrs. Seiler, I think she shared that we do have an upcoming art show. So I'd like to formally invite everyone to our uh, high school art show on May 20th from 5 to 7. That is in our high school library. And we run that in conjunction with our senior awards ceremony. So we are in the process of finalizing all of our awards and scholarships for our seniors. Uh, we will meet as a committee next week and uh, invite all of our uh, lucky seniors to that ceremony that begins at 6 p.m on May 20th as well. Um, and then again, a formal invitation to all of you to join us at graduation. Graduation is being held on May 31st at 7 p.m. in Tiger Stadium. We had our first formal uh, end of the year senior event with their last senior class meeting. Uh, so we officially kick off the senior season for them. Uh, they are five weeks away from their last day of classes at high school. So I believe so I'm totally making parents cry here. I apologize, but uh, we're really excited and the kids are, this is my favorite time of year with seniors all of the time. So we will be sending ticket information. Uh, we invite you and a guest to join us on the infield at graduation. Uh, we do that electronically. So we'll send out a link to you. We usually do that about mid-May to start collecting, um, to, uh, I'm sorry, to distributing tickets to seniors and their families and, and the rest of our Tiger staff. So uh, that is it for me tonight. Thank you. Ms. Uh, just a reminder, all of our retirees that are retiring at the end of this school year will be joining us here at the school board meeting on May 8th. So our administrative team can present them with their proclamations and we can congratulate them on their many years of service. So you'll see all of them, I hope, will be attending. Just Sarah, I don't Mr. Barassi? On uh, March 27th, myself and uh, Chief Tobin took 15 uh, juniors and seniors from our class to the visit of the State Police Academy. So they got to see firsthand the brand new Pennsylvania State Police hype video that put, they put out to them. So it's quite an eye-opening experience for some of them. So they got to see every facet from the horses to uh, the bomb squad to um, the CERT team. And uh, they got some up-close knowledge of what it's gonna be like to be a state troopers so they had a very good experience it was a good outcome i think we're going to single-handedly reproduce like the state police population so the hype video was pretty cool it was a mm -hmm. uh, lot of money spent on it but it was a it was a pretty pretty cool video a lot of horse pictures I think. yeah a lot very of horse pictures. Horse. Uh, <laughs> We also had a, a staff member, Donna Maley, she came with us, so she got a picture and some SWAT gear, so she thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> she came along the chaperone with us, uh, but yeah, I think it was, it was a good experience for her. Mr. McKenna? Yeah, so I am happy to report that our middle school sound project is two days away from completion. Um, the team at event staging work all last week and through the weekend until seven o'clock at night to get this done in time for our middle school play and concert so hopefully i'm looking forward to hearing the sounds that are going to be intelligible and not all barbled up but so i just want to report that all right thank you mr Bruce. This one, yeah. <laughs> no, we went that way last time. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I didn't have a lot tonight. Just to, uh, again, really appreciate the art students being here and love seeing what they've done. Um, and uh, and really, that's it for me. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's commendable that you can take 15 of our kids out to the State Police Academy. That mm -hmm. in this environment that we're living in, with uh, with all the pressure on police, and that's really commendable for us to do that. Um, and thank you for all the uh, effort that the entire staff has been putting into this budget, trying to bring it together and, and uh, make it something that we can live with. And uh, just to, uh, to add to Todd's comment earlier about this being an outstanding product here. I mean, with all the activities that we had going on here, the staff budget, the, you know, all the, uh, all the, all the curriculum that we can offer our kids with what we have to uh, to work with, it is uh, commendable and uh, 
it really is an outstanding place. And don't forget to vote on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, nothing further from me. I can echo the same sentiment. Uh, I wanted to echo the product <clears throat> as I watched my family struggle with a commitment to college. Um, we have secured one. Um, and I think I know she's ready to go. And I and I really um, attribute that to our high school team. I mean, actually, K to 12. Um, she would not be the kid that she is had she not have had the experiences here. So thank you. Um, I just want to say kudos to the middle school motivational speaker that came in this week. It's not often I get voluntary reports from school. So not only did he tell me about the middle school speaker, there was a picture with the speaker. So that <laughs> says a lot. <laughs> Nothing further. Is uh, Joe? Mm -hmm. Or sorry, is uh, John on one? John, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yes. Say no. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Nothing for me. And that comes up to me, so uh, I don't have anything further tonight. But uh, thank you to the uh, high schoolers for sharing your art with us tonight, and um, look forward to seeing the kids at graduation. It's exciting. Okay, so if you bear with me, I will read off the meeting announcements before we adjourn. Um, we had a workshop meeting held here in the boardroom uh, April third at seven p.m. Uh, followed by an exec session for personnel reasons uh, here in the boardroom. And then we will have a workshop meeting May 1st, 7 p.m. here in the boardroom. That will be followed by an exec session for personnel as well. And then on May 8th, only a one week gap, instead of our usual two, uh, we will have a regular board meeting here in the boardroom at 7 p.m. So, entertain motion to move. Second. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>